problem five, the Ilsekoch anachronistic problem. The story is that someone was behind the operation of removing skins and making lampshades from them. A woman named Ilse Koch, the wife of an early commander of Buchenwald, Karl Koch. In reality, she's probably the most cruelly lied about woman in human history. Let's hear what Holocaust documentaries say about her. One of the first things they see on entering the camp is the parchment display. On the table is a lamp with a shade fashioned out of human skin, made at the request of the former commandant's wife, Ilse Koch, a strapping redhead of ample proportions, nicknamed the Bitch of Buchenwald. One of her many hobbies was collecting lampshades, book covers and gloves made of tattooed human skin from dead inmates. On occasion, she gave orders for new prisoners with interesting tattoos to be reserved for her. One of the first things that the German civilians see as they reach the interior of the camp is the parchment display. On a table for all to gaze upon is a lampshade made of human skin, made at the request of an SS officer's wife. There is an anachronistic problem, though, because Ilse Koch was no longer at Buchenwald by the time the Americans arrived. She hadn't been there for nearly two years. Her husband left Buchenwald in late 1941 to run another camp, and even though Ilse Koch stayed on at Buchenwald a little longer, both were arrested by the SS around July 1943, when an eight-month corruption investigation began that looked into their actions while they were both at Buchenwald. The SS investigator, who also acted as judge, was named Conrad Morgan. He testified about his time at Buchenwald when he took the stand at the Nuremberg trial. He told the court how he temporarily moved to the nearby city of Weimar while his staff lived in the Buchenwald camp itself. Their investigation did not find tattooed skin or lampshades, but did find that Karl Koch had had three or four inmates killed. For that, Karl Koch was executed by firing squad on the Buchenwald premises a week before the camp was liberated. Ilse Koch was acquitted for lack of evidence. In other words, Morgan never found items like what's shown here on this table. In David Hackett's translation of the Buchenwald Report, we read about Morgan's investigation from another perspective, from the writing of an inmate. Keep in mind that Morgan is at Buchenwald, but he's not investigating the current administration. He's investigating events that happened years earlier. And while he conducts his investigation, Ilse Koch is in a Nazi jail. I was called by Dr. Morgan, who led the investigation, to make a deposition as a witness. Of course I avoided all damaging testimony because I knew that otherwise I myself could be condemned to death. In particular, I was asked whether Frau Koch had satisfied her perverse desires with me. What's amazing about this passage is that an SS judge is going around a concentration camp interviewing inmates about the conduct of a previous camp administration. And it's not a sham investigation because the former commander of the camp will be executed as a result of it. Conrad Morgan's investigation doesn't fit with the mainstream conception of a concentration camp where torture and beatings happen every day. For instance, just try to imagine Morgan's investigation as a scene in the movie Schindler's List. But for us, that's not the point. The point is that one can surmise that the current Buchenwald administration, watching Morgan's investigation take place, watching his investigators going around talking to inmates, would have had the impetus to run the camp by the book. The commander who replaced Karl Koch, Hermann Pister, was never accused by the inmates or Americans of shrinking heads or doing anything with tattooed human skin, and he ran the camp from January 1942 on. One can even find examples of inmates saying good things about him. 
To summarize, to connect Ilsa Koch with the tattooed human skin and lampshade on this table, you have to pretend that the last two years of the camp's existence never took place. Because Herman Pister was then in charge, and because Conrad Morgan had done an investigation, and because Ilsa Koch wasn't even there.